get up here in the Zoloft to get your head right. What's up, Earthlings, and welcome to the Zoloft. Now, I'm about to do a video on something that I never thought I would do a video on. And that being doing a video defending the Earth being spherical instead of flat. And right now, a lot of y'all are saying, why are you wasting your time with this? Nobody takes these people serious, though. <laughs> Nobody takes you serious. Shut up. So why are you making this video? Is this going to change people's minds? Like, I'm not sure. I'm very interested to see what you bring to the table to prove the globe is the truth and flat earth is the lie. Let's see what you have to say here with your little demon in the background. And my question to y'all who say stuff like that is, why haven't you learned yet? How many times does it have to happen where a small group of people can drag a bunch of people into their delusions? Did you happen to notice that a man won the woman of the year award? Bravo, yeah, woo, you go girl. Shut up. No one's trying to drag anybody. We are presenting facts that we are finding through research, something I advise everybody to do. Uh, we don't sit here and push anything onto anybody. All we tell people to do is research this because there's obviously problems with the globe. And bringing up the fact that uh, you have someone go and become a female and win the, f you know, a man becoming a female and win the award over the year, a female award over the year, that is just clear signs that the world has gone crazy. And that's, what kind of evidence is this? Uh, you know what, I'm confused. Let's c carry on with your argument. Did you happen to notice that a lot of people have been deluded to believe that the preborn aren't human and are fair game for slaughter? You'd be surprised what catches on with people. Now, a lot of people who believe the earth is flat try to use the Bible to back their claim. I don't know where you're going with this uh, bringing abortion into this argument and what are you trying to do to say that all flat earthers believe in abortion or that crazy people believe in abortion. I don't agree with abortion, I'm a flat earther, but that's my opinion and that subject is a whole different subject to talk about um, on a different level. It has nothing to do with flat earth. Now as far as the Bible and the flat earth, I'll tell you one thing. I came in this as an atheist and the minute I started realizing that the globe was a lie and started researching the Bible for the first time in my life, I found that Genesis was the truth. And get, guess what happened next? I go see a preacher or a couple preachers to talk to them about something within their Bible and they want nothing to do with Genesis. They say modern science disproves Genesis and Genesis is just a myth story. Yet in other places of the Bible where you led to believe that a man resurrected after three days of being dead okay but you know when it comes to the bible yes uh, there is proofs in there but there is also lies in there i don't think the entire bible which is a compilation of a whole bunch of books can be completely 100 percent true especially when the king james version is just that it's a version from a man but anyway, let's go on and see what you want to talk about with the Bible. And the Bible really doesn't lend anything to the flat earth assertion. I know they try, but they leave out other verses. But if they attach this to Christianity, y'all, it'll just give the secularists more leverage to say, see how Christianity shouldn't be anywhere near the educational system? A lot of flat earthers don't even believe the Bible. They think that's a conspiracy too, but still try to use the Bible to back their claim, which in itself is a contradiction. So first you're going to try to make the Christians feel that flat earthers are just muddying their Bible. And then you're coming out to say that we don't even believe in the Bible, but then we're using the Bible as evidence. You know, that's not contradictory. What it is is research. We're researching everything. Now when you look in the Bible, you're going to find stuff that uh, rings really true and follows those Ten Commandments that we all believe to be regardless of the religion, true amongst the morality of humanity. Now, when you look and take the Ten Commandments and read through the Bible, there are many spots where I disagree that, like the book of Esher, where uh, the queen is allowed to go and kill her, um, the people attacking her people, you know, anything to deal with the right to kill should be a warning sign saying that this might not be from our creator. I mean, how did the 
creator agree to say thou shall not kill but then allow certain people to go out and slaughter the creation it doesn't make sense it's contradictory in the bible and that's what we point to now there's parts in the bible too that speak volumes towards where we live the immovable earth the circle of the earth and circle and sphere are completely different words and i bet you you're just going to try to confuse that let's see for example, they cite Job 37, 18, which states, What's up, Job? Can you join him in spreading out the skies hard as a mirror of cast bronze? Elihu, who is posing this question to Job, doesn't mean that the sky is a hard dome. Hard as mirrored bronze isn't a good illustration of something that you would spread out. Hard as mirrored bronze ain't like a cloth. The Bible already says that God spreads out the heavens like a tent in Isaiah 40, 22 as he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. And y'all, God is everywhere. And yes, y'all, they did have the concept of what a sphere is. So here you're bringing up a contradiction in the Bible of one verse stating a hard surface being spread across like bronze and the other one being a tent spread across. Now, if you're gonna spread something across just like you spread butter on bread, it's across a plain. How are you going to take either verse and spread it across a sphere? And then your last little statement, of course, they, you know, you're saying the circle of the earth and then you jump to sphere. So find me the verse that says sphere. If they knew sphere, then find the verse that says it. No, they say circle. And they do, John and uh, other uh, writers of the Bible have said ball. Ball is a sphere, but a circle is a plate. Let's get that, let's, maybe we all have to go back and look at the actual definitions here because I have, I've researched this, so I know what circle means. How about you go and research that first before you come back and start trying to link circle to globe or circle to sphere because I'll tell you right now, that is your fallacy, not ours. Because when you read it literally and you look at the meanings of those words, Circle does not mean sphere. It doesn't. There is, you can go check that out. You can go back to school. Your teachers will argue with you. Circle is not a sphere. They did have a sense of dimensions. The Bible does say that the heavenly bodies serve as signs. Indicators, y'all. So if you're looking at the moon and seeing that it's a sphere, and looking at the sun and seeing that it's a sphere, it stands to reason that you're standing on a sphere. Even in the flat earthers' diagrams, the sun and moon are spherical, but not the earth. But as I was saying, the Bible says that God sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere, which means he's above the earth in every direction, which means the earth is a circle underneath him in every direction, which makes it a globe. Even in the South Pole, he's still above the earth because in space, there is no top or bottom. Ooh, you said bottom. Shut up, man. I'm looking at your bottom. Quit! I want to bite it. Shut up! Not only do I find this offensive that you have the devil as, I guess that is the name of your channel anyway, so, and then you're wearing a cross and such, and you're, you're here talking about the Bible. This is, you know, there's so much wrong about this on the surface. But let's not go into that. I just want to, you know, that little dialogue you have with the Satan there. I mean, that's just not, I'm not feeling it. Man. I, this is just, and anybody watching this, are you going to take this man for his word when he's playing uh, off of a devil behind him and wearing a cross himself? I don't know, guys. But anyway, so, you know, his logic about if we look up and see everything is uh, spherical then we must live on a sphere okay so if i was walking on a, just seeing a human then all animals will look like human i mean we go look at a one tree but all trees have to look at that like that same tree this argument does not stand up to everything else in uh, plain sight observation i mean you can't take one thing by looking at it and assume that everything must be then that shape that's a, that's a fallacy in itself. That's ignorance to assume that just because you can view one thing at a distance and say that that's this shape, then I must be living on the same shape. Hmm, interesting. 
Anyway, Enigma is more so referring to our atmosphere and magnetosphere rather than talking about a dome dome. And that atmosphere and magnetosphere has to be like our bronze shield against the sun's radiation and against meteors. Now, as far as I can tell, the flat earthers say that everything we see in the sky is inside the dome. Well, that isn't very much of a protective dome if everything that's in the sky that can fall to the earth is already inside the dome. Oh wait, my mistake. Flat earthers don't believe in gravity. So to them, nothing actually falls to the earth. Yeah, well, when we look at the ionosphere, the exosphere, or the Van Allen belts, there are explanations of the dome above us. Uh, they are certain levels, like the ionosphere, uh, could protect from certain harmful radiation off the sun. But if you look into a lot of research, glass actually stops UV, which is interesting. So we do have these elements that we use to protect ourselves from the sun. And when you're not protected with uh, lotion or glasses, what happens? You get sunburns or you can hurt your eyes with the sun. So you know we really don't know if we're being protected by some other element out there because uh, none of us can go up there and what nasa produces isn't satisfactory and or holds up to scrutiny so yes there are some uh, issues there and the names they've given to things like van allen or ionosphere or so so on are just another explanation so they can explain this dome above everybody's head without actually letting the cat out of the bag. But, you know, that's where we see a little bit of truth within the lie. I'm not sure if you can see that. And then as far as gravity, well, gravity only is needed to explain a globe, to explain how matter comes together and that we can all be standing on without falling off of a ball. Now, I'll tell you this is that Gravity has not been proven. LIGO isn't validated proof. So let's listen to what you explain gravity to be and how we are wrong to say that there is no gravity. Of course, things just fall. Density and buoyancy explain everything we see when it comes to gravity. How it works is the flat earth is in constant acceleration. So when you see a meteor, which in the flat earth view, the flat earth would actually be speeding up towards the meteor, which is already inside the protective dome. But yeah, that's right. Flat earthers deny the existence of gravity. And I'm sorry because in my spherical world, that's where flat earth world falls apart. If there's no such thing as gravity, there would be no point in having a flat earth anyway. According to flat earthers, if the world were a globe, we would just fall off of it. Yeah, y'all, people who went to school in 21st century America still believe this. Okay, first of all, he is using known, very well known, controlled opposition viewpoints that have been instilled into the flat earth movement to throw people off and to allow people like this gentleman here a way to discredit the flat earth. There is nobody in Flat Earth that I know of that is true to this movement, that are real people. Like, I, you don't have to trust me, but I am as real as you get. I've been through the hardships of life. I don't work for the government. I've been opposed to a lot of what I've been seeing. And I do this out of the goodness of my heart because I believe that we need to know the truth. I cannot stand walking around looking at people that are living in a dream because this is all they've created. They created a spherical dream. His, like he said, he's got his spherical world. So we do not believe that the flat earth is moving up in a space to, comp to compensate gravity. There is no gravity. Buoyancy and density is all that's needed. If you start looking into gravity, you'll start to find out it cancels itself in most of the equations because it's represented as mass, which cancels itself out. So I'm not sure how many more videos we're going to see where people like this use the um, fallacies that are provided by the government because the Flat Earth Society is a government institution that is placed here to divert the truth, to put out false facts to make us look like idiots. So this is completely wrong. If he did his research, he would know this. 
This is why I'm pointing a finger right now. This is nothing more than the government pulling its diversion tactics using controlled opposition that is already put in place for this very video to even exist with this argument. But let's carry on. And forgive me, y'all, I'm not trying to be condescending. And I'm definitely a lot nicer to flat earthers than they are to me. Flat earthers get triggered, man. They do not like it when you make their flat earth quake. Now, I'm not a mathematician or a physicist. I'm just making regular Joe observations here. But by their own premise, I can only see it as wrong. See, and by his own omissions, it's his observations. He's not a scientist. And by that reasoning, it's got to be wrong. You know, and he's kind of bringing in this that he's nicer than flat earthers are. Isn't it? I'm not sure, but I haven't ran into too many angry flat earthers. I've ran into frustrated ones, but not angry ones. And uh, I want to see the evidence of flat earthers freaking out. All I see is evidence of flat earthers bringing up research and the globe believers freaking out over it. But I don't know. Let's see what else he has to say. If there is no such thing as gravity, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Nobody would fall off the globe no matter where you're standing on it. Because the only reason why a person would fall off the earth is because there would have to be another body with a strong enough gravitational pull for things to fall off the earth to it. So nobody's gonna fall off the earth. Because if gravity doesn't exist, nothing could pull them away from the earth. But you're in luck, because in outer space, there is zero gravity. Flat earthers should be able to appreciate that. That goes along with your view. But if space has zero gravity, that means that space has no gravity to pull you off the earth. You know, I had to really laugh at this part because here you are claiming there is no gravity in space to pull people off. See, this is the struggle of someone who either you're controlled or you're just very ignorant because your mind can't get by gravity because uh, you're trying to apply it other ways but I just wanted to point out you're saying there's no gravity in space yet account for the gravity from the moon supposedly pulling the tides up or the sun's gravity holding all the planets in this globe model that you believe in so you think there's no gravity in space interesting no matter where you stand on it hey does the Bermuda Triangle conspiracy still work on a flat earth? Anyway, you don't need a flat earth. There's no top or bottom to space. But wait, flat earthers don't believe in outer space. But wait y'all, if there's no outer space, what is your flat earth accelerating through? You know it's gotta have some running room, right? Or running space. Because according to flat earthers, what we perceive as gravity is really the acceleration of the flat earth. Again, I'm going to point out he's using controlled opposition information from the Flat Earth Society, which is a known Mason startup, which I right away that I just call that a government institution because that's what it is there and funded by to spread um, false information within the movement. And the f mere fact that this uh, gentleman here only looks at that as a flat earther a rep, or a description of the flat earther means that either he's ignorant to look past and that's the first place he went to uh, from Obama saying it many times or he is a part of the whole government plan to divert people by using that false information so either or as a flat earther we do not believe in space no and we do not believe that we're accelerating to account for gravity because we don't believe that there's no need for gravity density and buoyancy explained it all as i said and um, all the celestial heavenly bodies that we do see they're a lot closer than what they have told us uh, you can go look at the inverse square law um, uh, colombo's law and look at that uh, to prove to yourself about how light travels and that the further it gets the more diminished it is. So light cannot travel for light years. That is impossible by the inverse square law. And that's something that you need to research. But let's carry on and listen to this guy. And I think according to them, this flat earth is supposed to be accelerating at 32 feet per second squared. 
So who knows how fast we're accelerating through this space that doesn't exist. Flat Earthers reject the existence of satellites. They reject that an object can maintain orbit by means of velocity. But they believe that acceleration is what produces the effect that we perceive as gravity. But they don't believe that velocity can defy the Earth's gravity. And of course they don't believe that velocity can defy the Earth's gravity. They don't believe in gravity. They don't believe that an object like a satellite can orbit the Earth because it would just fall off of it. And how's it gonna fall off? If there's no such thing as gravity, they reject that a satellite can orbit. Do you notice that electrons orbit a nucleus? That's interesting they bring up velocity because I posted a video, you can go look. Uh, it is how they explain gravity is a motion. That you could take away the motion and gravity disappears. So gravity, um, the way it's taught, and the fact that um, we are looking at it as a motion, not a force, takes away from this explanation that you're trying to give here. Because what you're doing is you're actually now uh, bringing in a bit of truth, but you're trying to mask it. Because we do believe in velocity, but doesn't that, that, that's what it is. It's velocity, it's not gravity. And you, now with the satellites going around, the, gra the gravity comes into play from the uh, velocity being fast enough for the falling of the satellite not to fall back to Earth. Well, when you look at airplanes, they get the velocity forward and they're cutting through the air, which is bringing, creating the lift. You know, gravity doesn't come into play there either. You know, so this, this whole argument with velocity, of course the velocity is, we believe in it. I, I'm not even sure where you get the facts that we don't believe in velocity. See, you're just trying to take what is actually real, which is the misconception that uh, what gravity is when it, all it is is another explanation of motion. Because there's many tests you can do to take gravity out of the situation when you apply motion. I played hooky from school a lot, y'all, but even I picked up on this. And for the record, I ditched way too much school to be brainwashed by the public school system. And a satellite isn't dependent on ailerons and rudders to determine its position in the air because it's in a vacuum and it depends on maneuvering thrusters. But because flat earthers don't believe in satellites, they don't believe that there are any images of the earth from more than 40,000 feet. Since I reckon aircraft doesn't fly higher than 40,000 feet. Therefore, there are no real pictures from NASA showing a global Earth or its curvature like this picture here. But hey, you'll be happy to know that this picture here wasn't taken by one of those non-existent satellites. It was actually taken by an aircraft that can fly higher than 40,000 feet. The SR-71, that's a bad mamma jamma right there. Now again, producing some more um, fallacies on what a flat earther believes and what evidence is out there. Uh, 40,000 feet um, is the highest that we'll believe that we've seen the picture from and everything above that's fake. No, that's incorrect because we have high altitude balloons that have gone over 100,000 feet and still show it flat across the horizon. And I have footage up that's higher from the um, high shot experiment out of Australia that was a joint effort with NASA that went up to, um, what was it, uh, 300 kilometers up, somewhere around there, and took a shot and the horizon was at eye level and it was a flat horizon. For the small amount of film we do have, that's what we have for evidence. Everything that we've seen with the curvature is either done with the fisheye lens um, to like uh, ISS, which could be a high altitude balloon at the far reaches of where we can go. Uh, when you measure, and this is another misconception, is when we're measuring away from the ground. It's not like they've taken a measuring tape and measured the actual height. The height is determined on air density. So there is a point where you get where there is no more air, supposedly, and you go into space. So what is the measurement then from that point out? So you have to ask yourself this, because if they're measuring using the density of the air, uh, then how does the altimeter m measure beyond that? So we have to question that as well for distance beyond that. But the mere fact that you're bringing up this argument that we believe 
in something and that you can argue against it by bringing in a picture from the SR-71, which we've reviewed all that evidence, and the X-15 and, and so on and so forth. And that picture you showed is, if you go and strain it out, you'll see that you're showing a straight horizon again. The SR-71 is actually a proof for the flat Earth, not against it. And since y'all don't believe that we ever sent a man to space, you don't have to worry about it. SR-71 pilots were pilots, not astronauts. And such pilots can testify to having witnessed the curvature of the Earth and flying faster than the Earth's rotation. Also, they're able to make a straight transoceanic flight path despite your charge against other aircraft that don't. According to these pilots, not astronauts, the Earth is a globe and it rotates. But I guess they're lying too. And other nations of the world are also in on this global Earth hoax. I had to stop it here just to talk about, he's saying that the SR-71 pilots are telling, are saying that it's a globe. So we gotta believe them when we have our own pilots coming out that are saying the other. Uh, now, beyond that, because that's just word of mouth, so that's really no evidence. And what I found interesting is how he said the SR-71 was going faster than the spin of the globe. Well, in a way, all airplanes under the premise of any other globe believer I've talked to uh, are already are going in relation to the globe so meaning that they're already going faster than the speed of the globe or or uh, vice versa well they are going backwards when you think about it like it's so confusing to see airplane flights and the way you explained it there lends to the flat earth because um, you are describing that a plane gets faster than the spin of the earth when that's our argument that how do planes get faster than the spin of the earth to get to its destination so think about that for a second because you just reveal to yourself an infallacy of the globe it's it's conf confusing in a way how you pre presented that but it's to me it's in clear sight that for some reason you had said that either unbeknownst to your or you know your own logic to how things work or you slipped up or why see this is confusing why did you say that because under the premise of the globe like i said if you're a globe believer you wouldn't say something like that that's actually lends itself completely to the flat earth and this is a valid argument when you think about it how do planes keep up to the spin of the globe like when they take off the ground, there should be some effect from the spin of the Earth. As if NASA is the only aerospace program in the world. Like NASA is the head of the New World Order, ordering other nations to see the Earth as a globe. I will kill you, you capitalist pig. You give it your best shot, you commie. Okay, Buster. But before we do, what do you say we agree to claim that the Earth is a globe and fool everybody, huh? Ha 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 ha. To joke about that the countries couldn't be involved in this is weak in the sense that you're not understanding the global connection to this all. That you can see where they've come together on the Antarctica Treaty, you can see where they're coming together in space. These are the points that we point to that where uh, we see the revealing of the lies, that, that the paradigm of where we live is different and they would all work together to hide this from us because that is how they control all of us is by controlling this dream this uh, um, fake reality that they've instilled on society and the governments in order to keep rifling money towards these militaries which is just another thing to ensure that they can keep their lie in place and anybody who refutes it any small country they have to strength to go over and put them under control i mean this is a pretty deep lie so yes the governments would be all together in on it and you got to look above the governments governments aren't they're just there to house us in these smaller cages across the world but overall un is the master cage in my opinion but do your research to sit there and think that the governments can work together when we see examples in antarctica and in space um, and that uh, you look at 
space agencies like uh, China or uh, JAX, and you'll see that the CGI's are even worse, are different. Uh, the Earth is different sizes and different uh, from different space agencies. So yes, they're working together, but not smartly, in my opinion. But go research. I disagree, um, and he is just mocking it, so you won't go look. But take a look. Plus, their logos all share the Chevron sign and stuff like that over the years. A lot of coincidences. And I guess birds are in on the hoax too, because when they fly south for the winter, they take a pretty direct path. They don't do these pyramidal paths like these airplanes. I guess it doesn't matter that maybe these planes are trying to stay close to coastlines in case they have to make an emergency landing or something. Or maybe those straight lines that it looks like they should be taking, they probably typically have unfavorable wind patterns. It could be a communications relay interference issue. It could be an airspace issue. I don't know, I'm not a pilot, even though I wanted to be, but I don't think my speculations are as far off as assuming the earth is flat. But it wouldn't matter if I was a pilot, cause you don't believe pilots. It's like y'all got some serious trust issues, man. But you want people to trust you. Yeah, trust is very interesting. Uh, trust is a way for people to lie. And trust is something that shouldn't be given out lightly. Now, finding out that you've been lied to about where you live, yes, we're gonna do due diligence and come out and research everything. And it's not that we don't trust anything, it's that we've backed right up to a starting point that puts us at the beginning again to research back over everything we've been told because you can't trust what we've been taught in school. So it's not about not trusting um, everybody for anything. It's just we will take it and make sure that we verify everything that's being said now. I don't think that's wrong. And we never push on anybody else to trust us. I've never told anybody, trust me in this. I could probably, uh, if I added up how many times I said, go research, go research, go research, I'd be in the hundreds of thousands by now. That's just what people have to do. Go research, go do the work. This is homework. I know we all hated it as kids, but you need to do it. You need to go back and research everything. Don't listen to anybody. Don't trust this gentleman here and don't trust me go research it for yourself. The mere fact that anybody would sit there and say their opinion is 100% right is a fallacy because as a human being, we are um, able to make mistakes and those mistakes can lead into lies if not dealt with. So let's deal with it by researching. The more people researching this, the more truth comes out. And research is the only way you're gonna know for sure if something's true or not. Don't believe anybody. Don't believe me. But anyway, y'all, on the SR-71, and, and, and please don't tell me that y'all don't believe in the SR-71 either, because I've seen it. I've seen that thing fly, dang it. I saw it fly before it was retired. I've seen it go vertical and then climb until you practically can't see it no more. Not until it burst into flames due to having crashed into a dome. But maybe I was hallucinating the whole thing under the effects of chemtrails. I just want to bring up another point here in this little segment is to start mocking the truth is a clear tactic I've seen uh, more and more and more uh, throughout these debunking videos. Uh, all the, if you really listen to the argument, you don't listen to me sitting there trying to mock everything. I'm trying to present the opposing view with research, to tell you to go research it. Just don't believe me. What I'm gonna do is to keep this video short is give you the key points so that then that inspires you to go look. To sit there to mock is only basically to tell you not to look at it. It's basically turn your head at it, it's stupid. Now that is, you know, a uh, layers quick tactic that they use. So it's something that's quick to throw out so that they could hopefully divert the audience there. And then the next one is they, wh when they have your mind like that, you, they throw in something else like you did with the chemtrail, you know? Uh, to throughout this video what I've noticed uh, he's brought in other situations other uh, conspiracies to try to throw them into the flat earth bag and then present the whole flat earth as from the flat earth society's point of view which is controlled by them so you do you see where this is going this is a complete setup uh, of information 
um, with some extra sprinkles, if I may, into it from the other conspiracies so that it can throw a whole bunch of stuff in one video um, and try to mock it, make it look stupid, try to get you not to research stuff is what they're doing. So basically, always look at these things as, are they asking me to go research to validate everything they're saying? Or are they telling me it's stupid to look at the facts? Now, despite the principle of a body in motion tending to stay in motion, somehow without even the influence of gravity on the objects in motion, the sun and the moon go around in a circle in flat earth world. The moon, which is an actual satellite, is able to float above the flat earth and go around in circles without orbiting anything. No propulsion and no maneuvering thrusters. But flat earthers don't believe that a constructed satellite with these things can orbit the earth. In flat earth world, the sun is smaller than the earth and goes around in circles above the flat earth along with the moon. It's always facing the moon, which means the moon would always be full. There'd be no phases. And by the way, we can see a curvature to the moon's phases because it's a sphere like the earth we're standing on. But their answer to this is this. There is an invisible anti-moon. This accounts for the eclipses in flat earth world. Y'all, I am pretty sure that if an invisible moon slipped in front of the moon, you'd still be able to see the moon. I can prove that to you right now. Invisible anti has been standing in front of me the whole time. Again, let me point out that uh, as a flat earther, I don't believe in an anti-moon coming in to cast a shadow on the moon or any of that. Um, I'll always stand on the research which tells me right now that I don't know exactly what's going on when it comes to our celestial bodies. I have my assumptions and my theories just as much as any scientist has come up with in the past with their theories. The problem that we have, and I think every flat earther can agree, is that we need more investigation here to find out the truth because what we're being told is a lie. And I'm not sure where you're getting this information from. Uh, I didn't really delve into the flat earth society deeply because right on the surface I've seen where there's a lot of diversion tactics with uh, fallacies that I just do not stand beside, um, nor does most of the flat earthers I talk to. And this invisible moon, I think he's trying to grab from that there has been talk of a uh, black sun. And he is taking that information that we've brought, some people have brought to surface about this um, black sun that is in history, in old cultures, is in uh, present day music, you know, the black hole sun from Soundgarden, etc., etc. These, again, are theories. Now, as much as we see scientists theorize about everything else, that's, that's all that is. It's not evidence. But to bring it in and say that, uh, and use it, misrepresent it, and make this claim that this is how we view um, the moon or the phases or how things work is a fallacy in his perception, not ours. Get out the way! Blocking my shot! I think it's weird that flat earthers believe in an invisible anti-moon, but they don't believe in the invisible force of gravity. Flat earthers believe that when smoke rises high up, we should see it blown if the earth really rotates. Nah, no, man, nah. -uh. Again, I'm not a scientist by any means. I still have a right to share my thoughts though. You're questioning everything, and I have a right to question your questions. You brought up a valid point about smoke rising and not being pulled back by the spin of the earth. There's no effect from the spin of the earth on any of the clouds, smoke, or anything that we see that rises up into the air that is lighter than air. Just like the test from uh, Andrea Barnes back in the early 19th century about going up in uh, London in a balloon, testing to see if the spin of the earth would uh, move below her or beneath her uh, to where she would later land in New York. But that doesn't happen. That's our argument with planes. And yet, like you said earlier with the SR-71, it was able to get faster than the spin of the earth by your words. It's just, you know, I still want to point back to that because now you're kind of discrediting yourself by bringing out this, that the environment keeps up to the spin of the earth. And remember, we got different speeds from the 
pole down to the equator so everything is going to be going at different speeds and we don't see that as well there should be some kind of marbling effect and then bringing in air speeds uh, when we look at the winds how could you have winds going in the opposite direction then of the spin and then they are still being kept up to the spin I mean show me the math but anyway let's continue on this path and see what you have to say anyway I'm not a scientist but I think the air itself has weight and anything that has weight is subject to gravity that invisible force you don't believe in even though you believe in an invisible anti-moon the air itself is bound to the earth and it moves with it. I'll try to give you an example. Let's say your car is the earth. You can even make your earth car a flat car like one of them Lamborghinis or something. Now in this car, let's say you're going 70 miles per hour or more. Everything in that car is moving at 70 miles an hour, including the air. But even though the air in your car is moving with the car at 70 miles an hour, it doesn't mean that smoke from a cigarette is going to get blown back by 70 mile per hour air in the car. The atmosphere is moving with the earth. That's why it doesn't affect the smoke. That's interesting. You use a car to explain how the air keeps up to the spin of the earth. So the car is the earth, but where's the windshield on the earth? What is keeping that barrier of air? Um, safe from the pressures of the incoming air like you you guys want to go and use a enclosed model which is basically the flat earth model in a sense but i don't believe that the flat earth model is moving through space wouldn't it be more uh, correct in the relationship to that moving car if you're standing on its roof then as the participant in the relationship of standing on the earth in relation to where the air is. The air is not enclosed above us on this globe model, is it? Or is there a windshield or something that's helping push the air along with the spin of the earth? You guys, uh, it's very confusing how you can go and use a model an enclosed model to try to explain how the air moves around when that enclosed model is dependent on other forces such as the windshields in that experiment. But y'all have said that flat earth is trying to use God and scripture to claim that the earth is flat and try to make that the glory of God's design. Yet they try to make the earth flat according to what they can understand. That's not attributing glory to God. That's you boasting in your own supposed understanding. What speaks volumes to the might of God is that God did author the law of gravity and only he can apply it to shape the galaxies and shape the solar systems and the planets where you despise his law. God setting the earth in prime position and rotation with scheduled variances in pitch are in perfect precision to facilitate life. In this flat earth graphic, the water falls off the earth. Why? If you say there's no gravity, why does it fall? And if I drop a feather and a bowling ball together, did the flat earth accelerate to collide with the ball and then decelerate to collide with the feather? Man, that would be a jerky ride all the time. Flat earthers say that if the earth was a globe, a plane would just fly off into space. But y'all, an airplane doesn't achieve escape velocity. Well, this one would, but you get the point. I can't believe that you would say that God created the gravity law. I read the Ten Commandments many times. And beyond those, I don't think there's any other law that we need to listen to. But uh, Genesis, I've read that story many times, and I still don't see gravity listed anywhere in there. You guys want to be the ones to shape your reality around everything. If you can't see that, then I advise you to go read again, because the statements you just made are so false on so many different levels. I just what is there to argue anybody watching this can see that you don't have an understanding of the bible especially with satan in the background there and your channel name is basically of that so i really 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 want to stress go research this guy is just he doesn't even know what he's talking about half the time and he keeps stating too that he's not a scientist that he's this dropout and these are all his understandings from his perception 
remember that, you know, and who's telling you to trust who here, you know, I'm telling you to go research, and this thing about the airplanes, it's, go research that, I mean, they like to mock stuff, and he wants to, you know, use gravity to m try to prove his points, when we completely have explanations, there is no falling off the edge, there's, Antarctica has an ice wall around us, there is no falling off, and there is no such thing as falling off the edge, because there is no edge. Beyond that's heaven, is the waters above, the waters below. There's where they get this falling off thing in the first place uh, is from their own ignorance of not understanding all the facts we bring to the table. This is all they're doing. With more research, you would understand that everything he's claiming here about gravity or falling off, or how we uh, bring the argument about the airplanes is misleading because he's not representing what a flat earth uh, believer has come to research. Now, I know a lot of y'all think it's ridiculous that I'm addressing this, but what's even more scary y'all is that more people are starting to believe it. Yes, give in to the flat side. Shut up, man. Like some obsessive flat earther on Twitter who flooded my page with insults and flat earth memes and then implicated me as a coward because I didn't respond to him as fast as he wanted me to. As if I don't have a life and other things to do. And my lot in life is to stay on Twitter and pay attention to him. I finally got back to him and said, no, nah, man, I I'll respond to you. But why waste my time here when I can address your assertions in a video? He not only shut up, he blocked me and he calls me a coward. But you wanted attention at a sweet yam. Here you go. From all the assumptions and accusations this gentleman is made based from the flat earth society i would only go as far to think that this person he's trying to bring up from his twitter account is a part of that same kind of controlled opposition now there is no proof of this person and the picture that he posts there that's kind of retarded to me and this is one way i sift through some of these agents and that is look at their video banners look at their avatars, go and research all the symbology be around Satism, around the Masons, um, <clears throat> around this whole paradigm of influence that is coming from uh, the elitists. I'm not sure what to call them from Illuminati to Masons to what have you. Basically, we have an evil here in the world that has hidden the truth from us and we're trying to break through it. They made it very complex to see it as a whole. That's why we all come at it from different angles. But understand this, it is still all a part of that evil system. As seen here in his own video, you can see um, the twisting and turning in the deceit that is being used to try to mock this truth, to stop it from happening. And the reason why it is growing is because it is the truth and it will keep growing. You cannot hold down the truth and you would have to kill everybody who knows the truth. And where has that, that happened in the past before? That seems to be what the final result is. And I'll be happy to lay my, down, my life down for this truth because it is the truth. And I am here to bring that to you, regardless of if I'm right or wrong on certain things. I want to correct myself and I want to come forward with uh, what was wrong and how, how it was wrong, where we were deceived. I mean, we're deceived once, so we could be deceived again. So um, I'm open to that. That's why I keep watching these debunk videos because I'm open to new evidence all the time. But as far as my research goes, there is no new evidence. And all the evidence that we do see leads to a flat earth. Feel free to say hi to the young flat earthling. I reckon some flat earthers are gonna be losing their dookie over this video. And are probably gonna lose some viewers over this. Big deal, people hardly watch your stupid videos anyway. Man, shut up, Demo. Anyway, y'all, thanks for hanging out with me in the Zoloft. Make sure you share with your friends, family, even people who get on your nerves. Because remember, y'all, when you share and support my work, a little bit of leftism dies. Y'all got some serious trust issues, man.